Hello, today I launched a challenge asking how to CSS this with the same one animation used for all four bars and the same one background used for all bar faces. And now I'll be showing you how to do that. So we start with a structure and we have four bars. So the number of bars is four. Uh, we have a 3D assembly. Um, within it, we have a loop. So a for loop. Uh, and here we have the loop index. Sorry, four. Okay loop index starting at zero uh, going all the way up to nine being incremented every time okay uh here we have the bar elements um within them we're going to have a number of faces uh this is uh, three visible faces every time so um again we loop so uh, while the number of faces face okay uh now one more thing we're going to be doing here is setting inside the style attribute we're going to set uh, an index custom property and this is uh, the loop index uh, i so uh, we're also going to be uh, taking this and adapting it for here uh, the total number of bars set to uh, n of course and this is all for the structure now we can move on to the styling and we're going to uh, start with uh, those bars as cubes and then we're going to stretch them uh, to bars so we're going to have the in radius of a square face of the cube let's say something like 2 m's something like this okay uh, now for every face we're going to have padding uh, equal to that in radius and we're going to set the background and just so that we can see stuff uh, okay, uh, this is going to be a linear gradient, uh, and here we take the first color from that list, uh, and then we take um, the second color from uh, that same list, so our uh, second color uh, from that list. Okay, now we're going to make all divs, we're going to make them absolutely positioned, uh, and now we're going to take all divs that are not empty, so not uh, all the divs that are not the faces so um all those that have 3d transform children so the assembly and uh, the bars uh, and we're going to set transform style preserve 3d here okay now we're going to put uh, the 3d assembly in the middle but first we're going to set a margin here and this is going to be minus that uh, in radius okay now let's put the 3D assembly in the middle so that's top 50% and it's going to be also left 50%. Now we have all those faces right in the middle. Now we're going to set a transform here as well and that's a rotate X uh, minus 35 degrees and also uh, a rotate, sorry, rotate Y, Y, sorry. Um, minus 45 degrees okay and this is it for the assembly now here we set a transform and this is a rotate 3d uh, we have um, the vector uh, component along um, the x-axis along the y-axis so uh, these uh, describe the axis around which we rotate um, and the component uh, along the z-axis is zero then the actual rotation angle is going to be a calc and we use a multiplier uh, times um, 90 degrees actually you can do something like a unit angle but whatever um, 90 degrees it is so here we have the i and this is zero initially j is um, the complementary so that's calc 1 minus i and the multiplier m is initially 1. Okay, um, now something else we do here is add a translate along the third axis and this is uh, by that uh, in radius. Okay, now let's uh, customize this. So we're going to have for the first child, so nth child 1. Uh, here we change the multiplier to 0. Um, and for the last one, so um, basically it's going to be uh, pretty much the same. Last one is going to be the third one, the third phase. And here we set um, i to 1. So now that we've done this, we have um, 
all faces positioned properly but we want only that one color for the top one so here we're going to set a stop position that's a calc and this one uh, is going to be uh, i times 100 percent so uh, this should do it okay now let's start uh, positioning uh, the bars so a uh, bar going to have transform and first of all we're going to have a rotate y and here we're going to use a rotation angle and this rotation angle we computed here uh, and it's calc uh, 360 degrees uh, times the current index uh, over the total number of bars okay so now that we've done this next we have uh, a translate uh, 3d so translate 3d uh, that uh, in radius 0 again that in radius okay but the thing is uh, if we also add um, let's say we have something like a calc and here we have the index uh, times twice and I need to interpolate this inside the calc so uh, let's look at things like this. I, I don't need that too, actually. So uh, let's just do it like this minus because it becomes more clear. As you can see, they're not, uh, they don't have um, the proper faces in front anymore. So we need to reverse this rotation. So um, let's put it here and we put it all inside a calc minus one times Okay, so now they all have uh, the proper faces uh, in in front as we see them. Okay, so we have that. Uh, something else, we want to scale these, uh, stretch them to be bars. And we're going to have a scaling factor. This is going to be F equal to 4. Um, so this is uh, scale Y. And here I use scaling factor, which is that uh, F by default. Okay, now I also want to move this uh, down, okay, um, a bit, that looks a bit better. Now, one more thing I want to do is have um, a transform origin, uh, and this is going to be a zero, that in radius and zero. Oh, in radius, just the R. Okay, so now the bars are back in the middle, all good. So next thing we want to do is register this F uh, variable. Um, actually, before that, I don't want to. I want uh, the bars to be a bit differentiated in colors, because um, if you look here, you can see that um, they're a bit different. The shades are a bit different. So um, in order to do that, we're going to add here. A filter uh, brightness uh, 1 minus and this is only going to apply for the lateral ones so the ones for uh, which um, J is not uh, 0 uh, so uh, J times something like 0 0.05 something like that and I'm also going to multiply this uh, with here I'm going to use that uh, M and I'm also going to use a parity thing. So um, this is one by default, let's say. And here for the even ones, what's the deal here? Oh, I need uh, to use a calc, sorry about this. So this is calc. Um, so here, nth child uh, 2n, I'm going to change that parity. To zero and now they're a bit different i think that if i increase this to something like 0.08 it becomes more obvious uh, or actually something like 0.1 it's even more obvious but now i have some lines there on the top in between so i want to add um i want to add a box shadow to cover up those uh, lines so um box shadow um zero zero one pixel blur and this is going to be the top color so uh, the first color in that list 
OK. But now I have those lines on the lateral faces as well, and I don't want them on the lateral faces. So uh, here I'm going to use a calc, and I'm going to um, multiply uh, with I. So I don't have them uh, on the lateral faces, only on the top faces. And uh, it's all good now. OK. So now I can move on uh, to a registering that uh, F. So CSS register property uh, name, uh, as I said, F. Then uh, syntax, and this is basically the type, which is number. And initial um, one. OK. So um, this should do it. Uh, now I can collapse this whole thing for the faces. And here I have keyframes, uh, scale, uh, and I'm going to use something like 50%. And here I have, so uh, this uh, should do it. And now I can add the animation, scale, something, um, infinite, and this should do uh, the animation. Okay, and it does, as you can see. But I want them to animate differently. So to do this, I'm going to use different timing functions. So uh, cubic Bezier. And here I have four values. I'm going to keep the first y0 and the second y1. And for the other values, I'm going to have, first of all, I'm going to have an x difference. And this is going to be 0.4, but it can be slightly bigger, like 0.5 or smaller. It doesn't really matter. And the current x is a calc. And this is, um, first of all, it's 1 minus that difference. So whatever is left out of 1 um, uh, times the current index the current bar index over the total number of bars. So uh, this is my current one, and this is what I'm going to use for the first one. Um, and as for the second one, I use a calc. Um, and here I add up um, the difference and the current one. So um, this, uh, this should do it. And if I want them to uh, stop for a little bit at the top, I can do, for example, something like this. Um, uh, percent, sorry. So, um, yeah, this um, pretty much does it. Um, and as you can see, that's just about 43 uh, lines of code. And if I see the um, compiled CSS, it should be around 50 lines. It shouldn't be uh, more than that. So yeah, 52 lines there. Um, yeah, this is it. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have and you want me to be able to do more stuff in the future and not end up dying in a trash can, please consider supporting my work. You can do it in one of the ways explained in the description below. Uh, you can do it with a donation. There's a donation link. Or you can get me something off my Amazon wish list, which would make this kitty very happy. There are two links there. Or you can at least share this and support the implementation of the cool features used here. Because um, as you can probably see, this is only supported in Blink browsers with a flag enabled for now. But um, with enough support, it can become cross-browser. And I think it's pretty damn cool. And uh, it deserves more usage. In any event, thanks for watching.